Hello, welcome to today's session, Learning with Leaders, part one with Sarah Goodell. And we will be learning what so-called kids movies can teach us about resilience and what younger people in today's school environment already learn about mental well-being, which is obviously very important nowadays, also in a business environment. Enjoy. Hello, Sarah. Good morning. Good to have you with me. Oh, thank you. It's, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Paco. So Thank you. Likewise. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, so to I mean, to bring up to speed uh, the audience um, and I mean, trying to introduce such a personality as you are in a few words. Um, so from what I understood and how I, I, I learned uh, to uh, get to know you, um, I mean, you have three daughters, young daughters. Oh, yes. um, and you're I mean, at least from my perception, you're almost either you know preparing for a birthday or you know in the aftermath of a birthday recovering i think is the word yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> and yeah. and also what i understood from you is that in general you are a very passionate and positive person and very passionate and positive not only about your family but also about marketing topics b2b social media and also very passionate about your team. Is that somehow correct? Yes, it's, it is. I am so lucky, Paco. I have to say that I get to work with amazing people, incredible customers. Every day's a school day for me, not just for the kids, but for me as well. Um, and yeah, I, I, I am very passionate. It is a, It is a brilliant topic, and I do believe that employees hold a secret source for companies you know they just they have a they have such a powerful incredible voice and i love helping companies realize that value so that's what i do i love it thank you so um i usually start these conversations with a warm-up question and please don't underestimate the warm-up question um okay. mm, because <laughs> i mean it should bring you in into the mood and I've been, you know, listening and reading, of course, very attentively uh, on uh, some of your posts uh, on LinkedIn. Yeah. And uh, I noticed that the topic, uh, and not only since, you know, 15 months, mm -hmm. uh, but especially in that period, the topic of mental health is yeah. of great importance uh, to you and obviously also to your team. Yeah. So um, one phrase I use for me personally uh, as a almost a mantra is positivity beats negativity always. Yeah. Talking yeah. about mental health, that might be a little bit more controversial than that. What is your your view on that? Yeah, that's a great question, Paco. And I think, you know, mental health as a topic, mental well-being is something I kind of understood and I was kind of curious of i'm not an expert i'm no expert um <clears throat> but i i think as a remote team because we all work remotely at tribal um and we meet every quarter and i kind of thought you know that's cool that works but i think the last 15 months has sort of accelerated my interest in this topic um because we've not been able to meet and and everybody's like oh well you've adapted well because you're a remote company anyway so i bet you were okay but even we were affected by it mm. and even i was affected by it and i think having um having the kids home you know doing homeschooling uh, whilst trying to run a business whilst trying to deliver excellent service to customers you know, you give your all in all directions and it's exhausting, right? It's exhausting. Mm. So for me, it really made me take it more seriously over this last 15 months. And I thought, well, if I'm thinking of taking it more seriously, my team needs to take it more seriously. And and I always look up to really amazing companies like SAP, Microsoft. You know, I've got networks all over these places. So I'm listening to what they're doing. Um, and I'm inspired by them helping their employees take a mental health days, taking time off to, to be for themselves. Um, and it really helps me realise you've got you've got to work extra hard to compartmentalise your time, you know, that you need to get out in nature, go and stand on some grass barefoot. You know, even if it's just five minutes between meetings, 
Mm. Go feel the warmth of the sunshine. Go breathe in the air of the countryside. Do you know, and it's just, um, it's a topic that I have been affected by, I think, over the last 15 months, and my team has in different ways. And I think it needs taking seriously. And I think, you know, companies have have an obligation. They have a, you know, a responsibility to support their employees with that, I feel. Mm, That's mm. how I feel talking as a CEO. I feel that it's my responsibility to really encourage my employees to take it seriously before they hit a wall. Um, mm-hmm. and, and then it's too late to recover, you know? But so, Sarah, uh, I mean, if it, if it's not so easy, even for, I mean, more mature people like us yeah. <laughs> to, admit, to admit that mental health is such an important topic. Yeah. Um, what, what, what is your experience? Do young professionals easily admit? Uh, is it perceived sometimes still as a weakness? I would say probably it is. I mean, actually, I don't know. I think maybe <clears throat> young professionals are, they explore this more, I think, at school. Uh, they Or they have been doing it. I've, I've learned that, you know, that, te- that that younger folks tend to have a, bu- a much more advanced understanding of this topic than perhaps I do. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's just my observation. They're a lot more aware of it. Um, do they have the tools and mechanisms to deal with it? I'm not sure in a work environment, perhaps less so. Um, mm. But then we're all feeling that at the minute. I feel a bit like, you know, have we have any of us have the tools and mechanisms? You know, it's a topic that we're all exploring and learning about as we're doing it. So um, mm. I, th- I think generally the awareness, I mean, my kids are, are learning about growth mindset. They're learning about um, positivity. You know, they watch um, Zootropolis, you know, the movie. And it's, who would have thought that was a story about mental well-being and health? If oh. anybody's watching this, go watch oh. Zootropolis and, and listen to the theme tune from it. The lyrics are all about picking yourself back up, you know, never giving up. There's a lot of resilience talk in that movie. And um, Interesting. yeah, I know. So, mm. you know, kids are being taught this now at school. I was mm. never taught this. I was just like, no. oh, sort yourself out, pick yourself up. So I'm having to relearn and go back. You know, I'm I'm working with my daughters on understanding what they're being taught and actually trying to learn some of it for myself. Um, but it's a fascinating topic. I'm on a learning journey of it. I don't know everything. I feel a responsibility for it for my team. But how can I help them if I don't understand it myself? So um, yeah. so it's an interesting journey, I'd say. To... So you're getting you're getting some reverse coaching from your kids and from your team yeah. in that respect. Yeah, I know. Honestly, Paco, when they pick me up on it, it's like, well, that's not a very growth mindset comment, mummy. I'm like, oh, <laughs> from my eight year old daughter. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, all right then. Yeah, mm-hmm. so maybe it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, you, there's some fabulous books, workbooks that I'm working through mm-hmm. with my eldest daughter, who's, has, who's like got some anxiety issues and, and kid, who's, <laughs> who hasn't after the last 15 mm-hmm. months. And, um, and it's it's interesting because she's doing the exercises and I'm doing them. So I'm learning through that as well. You know, you're ne- be a lifelong learner, you know, open your mind to um, new experiences and new ways of learning. You know, that we'll would come be... back to that later to lifelong. OK, learning. all right. Okay. But continuing uh, um, on that road of, you know, coaching. Um, yes. I certainly, I mean, I had a different, uh, a lot, lot of different, you know, bosses, colleagues uh, throughout my career. And um, I have to admit that uh, very positive conscious coaching, coaching to me happened pretty, you know, seldom. Let me put okay. it like this. Yeah. Uh, it was more a casual coaching. What, what is your most memorable coaching experience um, throughout your career? I've had a few actually, Paco. Very early on in my career, I I kind of hit a crossroads and I wasn't sure what I wanted, what I wanted to do. Um, <clears throat> um, you know, I had an opportunity to move abroad to Norway. I had an opportunity for a promotion. I had an, you know, and I just I was just didn't know which direction to take. So I got a life coach, and that was my first experience with coaching. Somebody said, you know, you try this coaching, and I'm like, what's the? F-? I'm not sure about that. Um, it was transformational, I have to say. And, you know, people who think coaching is not a thing, it's not, you know, it's just something you've just got to tick off because somebody told you, 
it's rubbish, right? If you open your mind to coaching, it is hugely powerful. Um, that was one of the first transformational moments for me. Um, and she got me to do a vision board, actually. <clears throat> I wrote about this on LinkedIn the other day. I got, she got me to do a vision board of what your future looks like. What would you like to achieve in life? And I, I, you just go through a magazine, tearing up pictures, popping it all on. Funnily enough, kids weren't on there, but I've since had three kids, so I'm not quite <laughs> sure how that happened. Um, but anyway, and I, and I was like, oh, yeah, whatever. I folded it all up, <clears throat> moved abroad. And, you know, when I moved into this house, I found that vision board. I, I was unpacking the boxes. So nearly 15 years later, I found it and I looked at it. And I was like, oh, my word, 15, I would say 75% of that I'd actually achieved what I had set out to achieve 15 years ago. It blew my mind. Right. So that's probably one amazing mm. coaching moment. That I just thought, oh, how, how has that happened? It wasn't when I was moving abroad, actually. It was much earlier than that. That inspired me to then take an executive coaching course so I trained to be an executive coach because I saw the power of it I then mm -hmm. booked myself on and I'm a trained exec coach I don't I, I use it in sort of management style now but not you know day to day I'm not an exec coach mm -hmm. but that was a very that's when I had my moment about moving abroad and and that, that was another moment where I just thought they, they don't tell you the answers they ask you the questions for you mm. to figure out the answers for yourself and that mm. was the decision for me to move abroad was on that when I trained to be a coach and and I tell you what they asked me they said you know what are the risks of not doing what this what what risks will you be um you know will you experience if you do it and I was like mm, it's not actually that many is there it's just a great adventure and that you know it's just it's a fascinating thing coaching really is and and I've been coached in management style so I've had two formal situations of real coaching I've had a, an executive coach ever since I started my business and without her there's absolutely no doubt I wouldn't be still be running this business today it, she's oh, amazing wow. yeah mm -hmm, there's no mm -hmm. there's absolutely no doubt her support mm -hmm. has been incredible so um yeah so I've had formal coaching three mm. different times but i've also had it through management experience as well so so but I, I don't think that i mean listening to you that it's only luck it i think it was a lot has to had to do with you were ready and you were open to coaching to be yes. coached yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. i would <clears throat> i yeah i think i've learned that as well you can't be told to do coaching you've got to be no. open to it you've got to be yes. open-minded and if you are if you have got nowhere to go, if you're sitting there thinking, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know where mm. I go from here, mm. open your mind, right? And that mm. comes back to the lifelong learning type attitude, doesn't it? Which is, you never have all the answers. Don't ever think you've no. got all the answers. You can always learn. Um, yeah, it's, I have to say coaching has been absolutely transformational in my personal life and in my career. Um, yeah, it's an amazing thing to do. Same. Let's continue to talk about your sweet spots. Okay. Social advocacy, social media. Um, so my, my next question is around, I mean, your team has been growing uh, a lot lately from what I've seen. A lot of young, passionate people. Um, so wh wh when you're um, looking for uh, a new team member, what are the things you look for in their social media presence? Yeah, I, <clears throat> activity, that would be probably the top one, right? I always say you can have a lovely social media profile, um, but I don't look for what you've done, right? If you're listing out, oh, I've done this, I've generated that, I, you know, I've, I've increased our traffic from there, you know, that's historical. What I'm looking for is current and relevance, right? Are you, are you current in your thinking, in your learning? Are you relevant in the market? Um, so I look for activity. I, how active are they? Are they active networkers? Are they actively reading? Are they actively participating in communities? Are they mm. actively sharing? You know, because that that's, I always say, you know, it's, the CV is the thing, to be honest, for me, it's a thing of the past. I'm looking for the living CV. I'm looking mm. for, the, for the person that is out there, that is showing and demonstrating, not just talking about what they've done. They're showing me what they're doing. And I mm. think that's a key difference for me. 
So, um, and I and I know a lot of young people that are stepping into the workforce now, perhaps don't have the network, perhaps don't have the job experience, but you can learn and you can show that you're learning. You can read, you can share it, you can participate in conversations. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. Even while you're at school, college, you can be doing that in alignment with the topics that you're learning about. And, you know, you don't have to wait till you finish there to start that process. You can start it now. Um, and I think mm. being in those conversations and showing me that you are learning and you're active is a big winner for me on social profiles. 